Hey, what's going on, guys? Okay, we got another Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls video for you today. And, uh, guys, I switched up my build entirely, changed out some skills, and uh, just overall trying to optimize my, uh, my character and be more efficient when I'm running these rifts, these greater rifts, and uh, just doing T6 in general. Now, I tested out this build on a few different types of runs last night, and um, I, I never died. I was doing quite well. Now, if we could stay away from the lag in this video, I can pretty well give you guys an idea of how the build works. Um, okay, so basically what enticed me to switch everything up was finding these, and that was the Hexing Pants of Mr. Yan. I've been after these for quite some time now. I was uh, fortunate enough to get them on a gamble from Kadala yesterday. So as you can see here, I didn't get the best of roll, um, but I did uh, swap out the uh, one of the stats for two sockets, and I put the Vitality Amethyst in there, and it helps a lot with the survivability of the build, okay? As you can see, my damage went down. That's because I'm standing still. As soon as I move, it goes up to 1.275 million. So that, that's not bad. That's actually pretty good DPS. But the legendary stat on the pants are your resource re generation and damage is increased by 25% while moving and decreased by 21% while standing still. Now, uh, that could have been 20 or 25, so the fact that I got 21 is actually really good. You want to see a lower number there because you don't want your damage to be decreased too much. Um, another thing I did too was I found one of these uh, Ramalodni's Gift. If you find one of those guys, a lot of socket to your weapon. So what I did was I switch out because I had to switch out one of the stats for a socket on the enchanting with the uh, Mystic to put a socket here in the uh, Star Metal. So what I did was I removed that socket and added 9% damage and then added a socket with that uh, unique Ramadli's gift. So that upped my damage you know quite quite a bit as well. I could have went with attack speed here. I tested it out. I went with attack speed of 7% um, on the star metal and with the 9% damage and believe it or not the 9% damage was doing a heck of a lot better than the attack speed which is crazy because I'm a pet build. So I just kept it there at 9%. The highest I believe is 10. Yep 6 to 10. So I, I tried and tried and tried to get to 10 and I think I'm at like uh, 2 million every time I try to uh, to enchant this weapon, so I'm just going to kind of leave it where it is for now. I mean, I got lots of gold, that's not the problem, but uh, yeah. So I, I switched that out. I put the socket in with the Ramadli's Gift and uh, got the 9% damage on the enchant. Uh, I used to use Kane's pants and, and boots, and then I sometimes swapped out for Blackthorn's boots and pants when I needed the uh, added survivability and bonus damage to elites. Uh, the boots, I'm wearing Ice Climbers. Guys, this one is simple. Gain immunity to freeze and immobilize effects. I mean, if you're in these higher greater lift, greater rifts, and you know you see these uh, the the ice bombs start to, to come out, you're immune to that, man. So you can walk all over and not have to worry about that. That's a big plus. Now, if you could get these boots, and my a BIS item for this would be prevent arcane damage. So I'm trying to get the amulet that prevents the arcane damage, and then basically you're immune to the worst possible elemental damage from the monsters because you got to remember that electrified has been nerfed to the point where you could survive it even in the really high level greater rifts. So getting immune to the cold and the uh, the arcane would be BIS in my opinion. Especially with a pet build, you're going to be raping these monsters, guys. So that's basically it on the change up uh, for the gear. Now the skills. As you can see, guys, I call this the ammo free build. Why? Because I'm not even using any Plague of Toads. Nothing. No spenders whatsoever. You're probably thinking, well, how the heck are you going to, you know, how are you going to get your fetish army up? Your fetish psycho fans. I'm not using them. I'm simply not using them. I uh, with this type of build here, you have to keep moving to get that extra 25% damage with the hexing pants. You're not going to get that if you're sitting there casting toads all the time. You're going to be standing still. So all your pets are going to be hitting for significantly less damage. So getting those fetish psycho fans out of there is actually a really good idea. And believe it or not, my damage is through the roof, even more so than what it used to be. Uh, I'm still kind of playing around with what I want for the fourth um, uh, passive skill here. Obviously, it used to be Fetish Psychophants. Right now, I have it set to, uh, I believe, yeah, Tribal Rights, which is reduces the cooldown of your Fetish Army, Big Bad Voodoo, Hex Gargantuan, Summon Zombie Dogs, and Mass Confusion by 25%, which comes in handy for that Gargantuan on those Elite Packs. I could spawn them a heck of a lot faster. I could opt for Zombie Handler. I could opt for Fierce Loyalty, or even Gruesome Feast. Okay, Gruesome Feast here will give you more damage with the more health globes that you pick up. So um, that those are also very viable. Like I said, I'm still playing around right now 
with each passive and uh, I'll do some math I'll do some homework and, and, and study and see what's best and when, whenever I do find out what's best I'll keep that certain passive as the uh, skill to use going forward so right now I'll be trying the uh, tribal rights it does seem like uh, a heck of a good passive skill to have 25% uh, reduced cooldown is a big deal guys a big deal so I switched out the Reign of Toads for the Puranado. Now what the Puranado is going to do is kind of pull all the monsters together and what that does is easier access for your uh, fetishes to kill and it keeps them off of you so survivability. So it's a big 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 bonus for your character guys. I didn't change anything else uh, other than that. That was the only thing. All my other skills are all the same. Um, as you can see here my bonus damage to elites went from 68 down to 58. That was because I, I didn't have the Blackthorns on but 58 percent uh, bonus damage to elites is still respectable, guys. My attacks per second is 1.74. Again, it's down from 1.9 because I took off the canes when I had those. But 1.74 is still very respectable. You'd like to have it right around 1.75, so it's really not a big deal. So that's really good. My crit hit chance is 44%. My crit hit damage is 474%. So those are right where they need to be. Fire damage is increased by 60%, which is good for my, my gargantuan and my zombie dog. So... Um, I'll, I'll let you see what this build does. We'll go to an area here, and I could already see it's starting to lag. So that's very unfortunate, but we'll see what we can do. Let's go to uh, here. The Halls of Agony are a pretty good place to go. So you want to get your dog up right away. And just pull them, go in, boom, boom. And it's pretty simple stuff. You just w run around. Because the more you run around, the more damage your uh, your pets are going to do. And look at this, guys. They're just wrecking face everywhere. And keep casting your, your army. Keep casting your uh, skills when they come available as well. Now you can see. Now, there wasn't just the elite pack there, guys. There was also the uh, the trash mob that was there with them. So my, uh, my fetishes were kind of uh, confused, not sure what to do, who to attack. They're just making mince meat of these guys. And as you can see, my gargantuan is already like it's already cooled down. That is a huge plus. And again, guys, I have to apologize for the lag. I uh, I think I'm gonna sell this laptop and and buy a, another one. I was looking at maybe the MSI Dominator. Um, one of those big super machines. But this, yeah, this is pretty crazy. It's pretty bad lag. Seems like the more on screen, the worse it is. So we got to show you what it does to an elite pack and a trash mob and an elite trash mob together. So it's, it's really efficient. I can do T6 rifts in six minutes or less, depending on you know how dense these rifts are. And guys, I'm telling you, check this build out. If you have this gear and are able to, to get it to work, do it, man, because you're just going to get more out of your Witch Doctor, more efficient, and more legendaries, because at the end of the day, we're playing to find these BIS items. The only thing that will make this build even more optimal, as I said, would be the amulet that grants you the uh, immunity to any arcane damage, because once you get the, the immune to cold and the arcane, it's going to be pretty tough to kill your Witch Doctor, especially when you're running around avoiding all the damage anyway, and your fetishes are going to be taking a mass of your damage. You got it made. So that's the video for today, guys. Again, if you want to add me up on uh, on Battle.net, my uh, username or battle tag is TiggyWiggy1977. So T-I-G-G-Y-W-I-G-G-Y-1977. Add me up, and uh, usually when I play, it's pretty sporadic. Like I could be playing, and then all of a sudden I'm gone for a few hours, and it's you know I I have a very busy life, so. Um, I have been playing with a few of you, and it's been really, really fun. I've been getting to uh, to know a lot of you and, and learn a lot of things, and uh, looking forward to doing it more in the future. So, uh, till the next movie, guys. Have a good one.